Joining the show tonight, former D1 defensive back at Western Carolina. Spent the last couple years in Northwest Missouri. One of the newest additions to a very talented Central Missouri roster, defensive back Charles Gaddy. What's going on, man? What's up, man? Thanks for having me, man. Excited to get you on here. We've talked a lot about the Mules on this show, dude, uh, and for good reason, like the year that they had last year and, and just what they're they're building down there with uh, Coach Lambeau and company. But uh, I'm just excited to get you on here, man. This last couple months for you getting to a new spot has got to be pretty exciting, huh? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm loving it so far, man. I'm loving it here. And your journey is one that has certainly been talked about, at least by Bearcat fans over at Northwest Missouri the last couple of years. But you've overcome a lot to be in this position right now, uh, whether it is injuries or things off the field or moving and trying to establish yourself in new spots. Let's just start things off with what brought you to, to UCM and what excites you about playing for the Mules. Uh, well, when I entered the portal this last time, it was like a business decision for me. Like, I love the time that I spent at Northwest, like, Met a lot of good guys, like some great coaches over there. But I just had to, you know, I feel like it was my last year and I had to be selfish, but in a good way for myself. You know, like I wanted to do what I thought was best for me and choosing UCM. It, it was it was tough, like at first, like going to another school in the MIAA. But also I felt like it was the best fit for me. Like I came here on an official visit, like the coaches were super genuine, like, they never tried to push on me too much, like, come here, come here. It was more so just like, hey, this is what, this is how you fit in the program. And, you know, I had to see it for myself. And so far, it's been great adapting to, like, the culture and just getting to know guys here. I love that. And that was something I was going to ask, too, is, like, you go from MIAA powerhouse right to another, like, just like that. And you're switching sides. You go from the green to the red. Uh, was that something you had even entertained the thought of uh, when you had first entered the transfer portal or not something you saw coming maybe? No, it definitely wasn't something I, something I saw coming at first. I'm not going to lie. Like, when I first entered the portal, I wasn't really expecting to stay in the MIAA. But I've been through this recruiting process a few times. So I just know, like, when you talk to a coach, like, what's genuine, what's not, like, then when you get there, you get to see and, like, get a feel for things, like, around the community. And that played a big part in it. But, no, I did not expect this at first. No, I didn't. No, fair enough, man. Fair enough. And that actually, you know, kind of piggybacks right into my next question is that when you've gone through – someone in your shoes has gone through the process a couple times of trying to find a new home like that, do you feel that <laughs> – you maybe you're more well equipped, whether that is mentally or just how to handle or how to, like you said, determine maybe some of the genuine and separate some of the the real from the fake for for lack of a better term. Uh, when you're looking at some of these schools and talking to other coaches, do you feel like this time around maybe you're better prepared than fresh out of high school? Oh yeah, for sure. Because you know, fresh out of high school, like you're young, you don't really know like what's really genuine or not. It ain't like a high school coach. Like it's a once you get to college, it's a business. But also sometimes like. You got those coaches who is more than the business to like they actually care about the kids that's on their team like yep. they ain't there for the money so i mean everybody different like you got to respect it either way because it is a business but it's also some coaches out there where it ain't just about the business it's also it's also about the players hell yeah and from a coach's perspective perspective too you're not going to recruit a guy, a four- or five-year guy that you get into a program. And, you're not going to recruit him the same as a guy in your shoes that has one year and you're coming to fulfill a job and fill a spot right now, right? Not to say that there's more emphasis on one or the other because they both serve very specific and very necessary roles on those teams. But how do you think maybe from a coach's perspective that differs in your experience, uh, maybe how those conversations change or maybe even the timeline changes? Oh, uh, really? I just, when it comes to like the recruiting process and everything, like you really got to just soak it all up. Like even if you were a freshman, uh, a transfer or whatever, like you, it's really just all about what you think the best fit is for you. You know what I'm saying? And like, there's going to be coaches that hit you up and you would think it, you would think they love you. And then you won't hear from them after that day. Like that's just how the portal goes. So it's just really about like, who really, who really wants you, who really, like, wants you to be a part of their program and what coaches you connect with throughout that process. You just got to take it all in, though, and just, you know, figure out what the best decision is for you to make. Yeah, absolutely, man. That that stays the same through through all of it, and your, kind of your mindset and approach should 
emphasis on should be the same for a lot of guys and a lot of times it is not and I think that's where you get into some of the problems uh, with the portal and with guys that um, you know can't find those those landing spots but for you football has brought you to a few different places obviously that started back in high school your first real move going down to Georgia man where you said uh, started to take playing football in college a bit more serious down there talk to me about uh, those last couple years of of high school football for you and and maybe how it changed the way you viewed the game oh well my junior year of high school like going into my okay yeah going into my junior year high school um at Douglas County High School in Douglasville Georgia we got a new coaching staff um, we got a few coaches from a little bit everywhere, but they had great coaching experience, like coach in Georgia football. We had a head coach who won state championships. Um, okay. His name is John T. White. And uh, he really came and he changed my whole perspective on high school football. Like before he came to Douglas County, like I'm going to be honest, like we didn't know what it looked like to get offers. Like we never knew how the process went. Like we knew nothing about coaches showing up to high schools, none of that stuff. Like, yeah. We was just kids that was just happy to be playing the sport. And when he got there, like, I want to say it was maybe his first day on the job. Like, we were seeing Alabama, Clemson, like, Georgia, like, all these schools walking through our building. And we was like, bro, like, no way this is real. So I just knew, like, from that, that day forward, like, I just knew how serious it was and, like, what it took to get to that level. And my coach instilled that in us early, like, as far as they're on the job, like, if you really want to do this college thing, like, it start now. Like, let's get this rolling. So I say my last few years of high school was just, like, a great learning experience for me because it actually brought me closer to the game and got me where I am today. That's big time. That's big time. And not everyone gets that, right? And it took you maybe a, a change in scenery, a new coach, or, or something along those lines, maybe something else that kind of uh, put that into your the forefront of your mind, which is, which is cool. And I'm glad that you got to experience that. Now, coming out of high school then, you get a good amount of interest, end up at Western Carolina. And it's not as if you didn't see the field, right? You get a good amount of snaps out there, even start a handful of games. But you talked about needing a fresh start after, after getting your degree and graduating, what initially spurred that thought uh, after graduation, knowing you wanted to go to a different spot? And and was a D2 school like Northwest even a possibility uh, on your radar after that? Uh, yeah, it was. How I felt at that moment, it was just like, I feel like I just needed a fresh start. Like, I had been there. I graduated. I had two years of eligibility left. And I was just yep. like, if I got two years left and I already got my degree, why not grad transfer and just start somewhere new? So, Going into it, like, I'm going to be honest, I ain't care if it was another FCS, it was FBS, Powerhouse D2. But a funny story is I kind of used to kind of used to see Northwest play. I think it was the time in, like, 2015 or 2016, one of the championship years. Yeah. I saw them on ESPN. They had did, like, a trick play on a pick six. Like, they caught a pick, and they kept, like, tossing it back to each other. So that was, like, the only time I heard of that school. <laughs> When they reached out to me, I was like, dang, like, this is a school I seen on ESPN when I was younger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was a cool moment. And uh, I, obviously, like, Northwest Missouri State, they got great history. Like, yeah. great guys that came out of there. So I just took the time to get to know the coaches. I came up on a visit, and I felt like that was the best fit for me and a good fresh start for me. And you knew, obviously, some of that history getting into it. It's not like you just showed up on, on campus on day one and just said, you know, oh, surprised by everything. Like, you do your homework, right? Coming into a building, you're trying to do your research and, and know some of the faces and, and know kind of what, you know, get, get a sense of the operation before you just show up and become part of it. What were your expectations knowing some of those things? Um, I think a lot of people on the outside, of when you see that that level of success, I think a lot of people assume that uh, a program like that is run incredibly tight and incredibly disciplined. And were those kind of the things that you saw right away? What were those expectations like? And uh, what was your reaction when you got on campus? Oh, yeah, for sure. Once I saw the team, like I knew, I kind of saw what got them, what they had. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like, very tight knit, good family culture. Like everybody was close, so that was something I looked at that really caught my eye. But I would say, like, it's time to start fresh. Like, just put your head down and grind, and like, show them what you can do. Is how I was really my approach when I got to Northwest that first year. 
Yeah, man. And, and that's really all you want to do when you go to a new spot is come in and prove yourself all, all over again, right, in front of a new group of guys, a new set of coaches, and uh, even a new fan base, right, at this level when you have a very sure. passionate fan base like Northwest that is obviously all 100% behind that football program. But you fast forward to next year, you finally get that chance with a new squad. Terry Meniscus, game one, sidelines you for the year. Just all of that gone in an instant. Like I told you before, I can certainly appreciate and understand that, but talk to me about that process, what you learned uh, about yourself during that, and I guess also about that squad and that team, that community. Oh, man. Uh, just back to that day, man. I still I still think about that day. I think that was going to be one of the best football games I ever played, and, like, the fan base really, like, embraced me, you know what I'm saying? Like, even after. saw like how genuine everybody was in Maryville like around that time like, I had a lot of people loving on me like when I had surgery and everything like teammates showing up bringing me food and stuff that's awesome about well, learned a lot about the team at that point we became a lot close I became a lot closer with a lot of guys throughout that process uh for me personally uh, it was a mental struggle because I had never had a serious injury or had to get surgery. So I had a lot of, like, doubts in my mind when I first. The people around me that was motivating me, whether that was my family, my girlfriend, or, like, just friends, period. Like, I just had a lot of people that yep. lifted me up throughout that process need that. and helped me get back on my feet. 100%, man, and you need that. And then now you've obviously come out on the other side of that, right? You go on to have a, a successful year following that, make a big impact in that defensive secondary in 2023. Now, on to your final year, UCM, what goes through your mind when you think about, you know, what you want to accomplish this last year, one last go-around? Oh, man, I'm trying to win it all. I'm trying to go <laughs> out with a bang. And I'm going to be honest, I feel real good about it. Like, I ain't going to spoil it too much, but – we definitely gonna put the world like on notice. They about to see like what we really could do. Like this, this, this the year. And for me personally, man, I set I set goals pretty high for myself because last year I feel like it was just a confidence builder for me, like coming back off the injury. But this year, like I got that swag back, so I'm, Hell yeah. I'm ready to get out there and show what I really could do. I love that, dude. You're not the only guy, you know, on that roster that thinks that way. We know that. Uh, speaking of another dude that's got that same mindset, you pumped to practice against the Harlan Hill winner or what? Yeah, man. That, that's my dog, though. That's my yep. dog. Yeah, yeah. Definitely going to compete for sure. I was going to say, I, yeah. Oh, he can make me better. I definitely know he can make me better. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that offense is one that, that we've talked about, again, rightfully so, a lot on, on this particular show. But uh, maybe haven't given the defense as much love as, as we should have in the past because they were also a reason that they're in a lot of those games. But uh, feels like that squad has potential to be very balanced. And I know you haven't been able to uh, really see it yet. Camp is pretty quick approaching. When do you guys start, by the way? Oh, August 7th. August 7th is like a poor day, and I think we officially Dude, it's start. close. Yeah. It's close. Is yeah. real close, and you're going to have a, a, a fun group of guys down there, a really competitive group of guys. That's kind of the general sense that I get. Um, but you're one of quite a few of them coming to Central Missouri that have a lot of the D1 experience, and I think that's something that's worth noting. Uh, what do you make of that, and what kind of emphasis does their coaching staff put on bringing the, in that kind of caliber of player? Um, I think this coaching staff is really smart. I think they know what we want to do as a group, and I think – Maybe they just had some pieces that they had to put back together. I know they lost some big keys last year. They had some really good players last year that left. So I think they just replacing that, and we're going to build off that. But um, I think these guys that we're bringing in, like everybody getting along really fast, like we're trying to build something like special here. So I think the coaches did a great job for bringing those pieces in. And they don't really emphasize or try to bring anybody else down. Like obviously – it's a process like a kid going to come here to play, but it's also a kid's job that's been here to keep his job. So, yep. you know, it just creates competition and, you know, trying to build greatness. Yeah, man. That's kind of ask going to ask too. Like when you have these conversations, especially a guy in your spot, not that uh, a lot of teams would necessarily like promise you a job off the rip, but um, because, that, again, that would be a discredit to some of the guys they have on their roster now. But what are those conversations like uh, with them being very open about, like, hey, you're going to come here and have a great chance to play, obviously, and come in and, and earn a lot of really big-time snaps. But 
again, it goes back to earn, that word earn, of like coming into camp and earning those snaps over guys that have potentially been here for two, three, four years. What were those conversations like with the staff? Oh, it wasn't no no promises or anything, you yep. know, like they, we run a we run a defense here that I think I could I could see myself in and fit in perfectly, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of the conversation we had. Like I would ask questions, they would ask me questions what I like and then they would tell me how they feel about me and it's just about all about how I see myself in this defense and how they see me. So, there's no promises, definitely got to come out and prove myself still no matter what I did in the past. I think that goes oh, for yeah. anybody. You know what I'm saying? So I still got to come out and prove myself, but I won't really have conversations about roster spots and things like that. Like it's definitely some movement on the rosters and things like that for guys to get a chance to prove themselves. So that's really all it is, is when you get your shot, just, you know, take advantage of it. You take care of what you can take care of and the rest will shit. It'll figure itself out. I think that's the way to go, man. That's the right mindset. It's kind of funny, too. Like, it's not like an apples to apples comparison by any means, but I think in terms of, uh, you know, in the NFL where where teams feel like they kind of have a window, right, to really get something happen. Maybe you've got a, a franchise quarterback. Sound familiar? At least uh, the equation of which you guys have over there at uh, Central Missouri right now. And I almost think from the perspective of, like, yeah, obviously you want to get freshmen in here and develop them and, like, turn this into a program that continually has these kind of seasons. But also the other half of me, again, I'm not a coach over there. I have no idea how they think. But just the, the other person to me is like, man, we got a dude here under center right now. We got some other really talented dudes around him. Let's find as many talented guys that have a ton of game experience. And, like, this is our window. Like, this year is a year where we can go out and win the whole damn thing like you talked about earlier. I'd imagine that is uh, kind of an unspoken sense around there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we know. We know. Like, we we as a group know, the coaches know. Like, we know what we got, and we know what it's going to take to get where we want to be. Like, it ain't something we got to really keep broadcasting or, you know yeah. what I'm saying, putting on social yeah. media. And stuff you just like let that. me like, talk about it. Yeah, we really yeah. tighten it, but we definitely know what we got. We definitely know what we got for sure. That's good, man. Where does uh where does Baby Chop come from? Uh, so, um. When I was six years old, my dad, he passed away, and uh, he went by Chop. His nickname was Chop. Oh, and I'm not man. the oldest son, but, like, everybody always just told me, like, man, you remind me so much of your dad. You remind me so much of your dad. That's and awesome. um, I'd, uh, I think he got, what, six, seven kids? And I'm the only one that got his last name still, like, you know what I'm saying? And I don't got that many memories with my dad, but I was just like, you know what I'm saying? He always lived through me, so I just took his name and I, and now I'm chopped. So, so that way he always living through me somehow. You know what I mean? That's incredible, brother. Cut the baby off is just chopped. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Dang, that is that's that's a a lot better of a of a background you know story and I guess origin story of that name that I was expecting. I'm glad that you're uh, that you're carrying that on, man. I know that uh, that's just something that, that a lot of people w- would kill for. So I'm excited for you and. Uh, uh, excited to watch you guys compete this season, man. Appreciate you. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Have a good rest of your night. Definitely be following up with you along the season, my man. You too, man. Thank you for having me tonight, man. I really appreciate you. Of course. See you, man. All right. My guy.